Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Big hello to all you new subscribers. Thanks for stopping in and joining us here. We have us a lot of good outboard fun here. Um, well, my last video, I showed you there which one we were going to get to next. Bring me a victim. I showed you our next little victim. It's it's a cutie. Did I mention it's a cutie? I show you. I show you again. Um. So I got to get to this little guy. Um, fifteen Evan Rude, and it's all bound up. You try and pull it over, it won't pull over. Um, can't move the shift rod. So I'm going to probably pull the recoil off there to see if I get any movement at all in that power head. If I do um, get some movement, then most likely we're looking at a lower unit problem. Um, because a couple things. If I can't turn the engine over, it could be stuck in gear and I need to rotate the motor so I can get it out of gear. The clutch dog may not be aligned right. Could be seized up. I mean, it's not or has not been submerged, so I am told. But it has been sitting for a couple years. Um, and I'm not sure if it was sitting indoors or out. But anyway, I picked it up for a good price. And we're going to cross the fingers and hope it ain't the power head. So, but until I can get that recoil off or whatnot. And determine whether it's the lower or the upper or all of it. But we'll just have to dig into it and find out. So that's what we're going to do there, but I also got a 55 commercial Johnson that a fella wants me to put an electric start system on. I won't film too much of that because I just did that on a 40 commercial. Here are a couple videos and the process is going to be the same. If I uh, come up with anything unusual or whatever, I'll film it and show you. But one thing I do on those, and uh, you should do also if you're going to add electric start, is get all your stuff out. Um, you know, I got my leads, my battery terminal leads, I've got my Noid, I got my Noid, my Silenoid, and if you look, I've cleaned all that up, everything's all nice and clean and bench tested and you want to do that first and then you got to have some nudity in your videos you know some continuity some continuity so I get out my little continuity checker and put the little points on there and go beep 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 make sure my switch is good and then I've got a couple starters here I've bench tested that I know are good so you want to do that kind of up front because the last thing you want to do is dive in there getting that starter put on there and then when you go to hit the button nothing so you want to check all your components clean them all a little bit of sandy paper wire brushing get everything all good and clean get everything good and tested and then put it on because the last thing you want to do is get in there and it not work so let's dive into this little bitty uh, Evan Rude cutie. And then I had a little Mercury. It's either a 9.9 or a 15. It came in. Guy says he can't get it started. And he doesn't think it has spark. And he even brought me a couple used coils with it. So we'll see how far we get. But right now, let's get on this little cutie and let's get at it. Okay, here's the little cutie in questionis. Now, you might be out there and run across one of these 
and you go to, to pull it over and this one pulls a little and then it catches. Um, and then you go to shift it in out of gear and it seems like it's stuck in gear. On these 9915 OMC's, old style or later models, a um, couple things. They have on here a safety interlock that is a wire. I'm hoping you can see it right here. There's a wire, a little, well, it's not a wire, it's a metal, a thin metal rod. And if it's in gear, you can't pull it over because of the safety interlock. So you might think, well, it's froze up. Um, well, at the same time, if you can't turn over the flywheel, depending on where the clutch dog is in the lower unit, it'll be bound in gear and you may not be able to get it out of gear. If you can't get it out of gear because of where the clutch dog is and you can't rotate the motor over, don't reef on this shift, on this wonderful plastic shift handle. The cradle on these things comes up from under the bottom for the clutch dog and you can bend that. I've had them come in here, several of them over the years, where the cradle that moves the clutch dog back and forth on the prop shaft splines will be just bent all to pieces. And the lower units are basically the same on the old style and the new style. Um, so, the best way to do it, I found, is to zip off the flywheel and get, get that motor to turn over. You might bend it and whatnot like that. So, and these are slotted head screws, so to remove this, all it takes really is a screwdriver. Get that out of your way, there's that rod, and turn this flywheel over. This one's a little, it's a little tight, it's a little sticky, this thing's been sitting. But once you do that, you should be able to shift it. So I say, hey, I got it off. All right, I'll lose all my nuts. Okay, so okay, we're still in gear there. took that screw out of the lower unit and I don't see nothing coming out of there <laughs> take the top one out too I still don't see nothing coming out of there let's see oh looky here Ooh, looky there. Look at that. Look what's coming out of that lower unit. See that? Pure salt. No oil, no grease. Just powdery old salt. Okay. 
Okay, you can see what's coming out of here is just pure salt. No oil. No nothing. I'm going to shoot some air in this top. Watch this hole right here. There you go. Nothing but pure salt. So, looks like we're going to be dropping a lower unit. One dead lower unit, but I'll be using this drive shaft and shift rod because right out there is the one. Sorry. that I'm going to be using and if you notice it's got a long shift rod but the first thing I'm going to do is put the recoil back on this little cutie and the spark plugs back in and see if she'll start up for a minute I'll be right back nothing going into that car. <laughs> this thing is just a mess. What? So I don't think she's going to start. Never know. But we'll give her a shot. Thing's all stiff. What they do to them. Nice short.
Okay, what I was doing there was running this thing, this carb, um, out of any fuel that it had in it because whatever fuel was in there, I'm sure is very old. And it ain't gonna hurt anything running that thing a little bit. It's not even hardly warm yet. The thermostat couldn't, well, I guess it was still open, but there wasn't no water going up through it, but uh, it's, it's not even not even hardly warm so um but i wanted to get any gas that was in that car run out of there then i'll re-clean the plugs and uh so we got us a good power head and i got a good lower unit over there you know how it's i know it's good because i wrote on there it's good but it's for a long shaft, so I need to find my lower unit stand. It's around here somewhere. And I'll get that. We'll swap that drive shaft and shifty rod out. I'll be right back. Drive shaft out of this old one. See what kind of impeller. The housing looks okay on it. Now for you guys that are kind of new to the channel and and so forth, these uh, shift rods just screw in. And what you do is you screw it all the way down and it'll generally end up in a funky position. You know, cock, something like that. You want this, you screw it all the way down until it's tight. You know, and if it ends up like that or something, just turn it back about a half turn until you got it leaning forward like that okay see how it bends and then goes forward that's how you want it to go in they just screw in and screw out see what we got for a impello well, the, the cup looks all right not all super full of salt so the whole impeller housing looks pretty good actually Nice, soft, pliable grommet for the pickup tube. Um, yeah. You don't really see no oil on the end of that, just dirt. <laughs> the plate, it's not all wobbled out. Always check that center hole. Sometimes they'll get all wobbly in there and I don't know what causes it a hundred percent but they'll this one's good and tight so that can be reused the impeller well oh, it's got a lot of memory set but it's not delaminated so I'll look at the other impeller and uh, there's my little pin of which of course I dropped but it's right here there's your little pin key or whatever you want to call it to keep the impeller where it's supposed to go there and there's our little short drive shaft that we need the splines up the power head in look good not all rusty no no sign of it taking a whack anywhere everything looks pretty good <laughs> You see how that one ended up? That would be just like if you're putting the other one in and then you just turn it back straight so the bend's forward. And then screw that out of there. I have other videos that I show where you can cut this and shorten it and all to make it a short shaft shift rod. Hey, it's got oil in it. There's a concept, huh? And this housing is also 
in very good shape. But we'll have to get a new impeller because this one ain't any better than the other. There's my little key. Hey, that's two for... No, I dropped the other one. Never mind. I was going to say, hey, I got two of them out without dropping it. I dropped the other one. See how... Whoa, look at there. You see? Came delaminated. There's... If you end up with this on your outboard, that's not a bolt or a nut. That's the center of the impeller. You see. So you got to get that off there. I'll just put it in my vise and generally I can twist them off. I have had them so bad though that I had to make cut a, uh, a little slice in there with a hacksaw or my die grinder. But we're going back with the short shaft anyway. You understand? You see, we're going back with this guy. This plate is the stainless plate where the other one was painted. So this one also looks in really good shape. So a little paint from the factory. There we go. Okay, I wanted to show you the uh, difference in these two propellers. This is the propeller that was on there on the uh, bad blue lower unit. This is your standard, I think, Solus. A little dingy here, but I'll dress that. And uh, But that's your regular old aluminum, least expensive probably that you could get on the uh, iBoats and boats.net marine engine you know just your standard 9915 propeller now here's the one that was on the white lower unit that I'm putting on there get out of here you creepy Carly of course I gotta kill the spider first hell he don't want to die he wants to bite me I got him. But anyway, that's the one that was on there. You see the that end of it? And here's the one that came off the lower unit I'm putting on there. Look at that thing. Look at the pitch on that. It's almost flat. So I guess this would be a, a torquey little torque prop. I'm, trying, I'm looking for numbers. This is a 10 by 7. Look at that. And then this one is a nine and a quarter by ten, nine point two five by ten. Yeah, quite quite a bit of difference. And a ten by seven. Look at that. And then that's all how beefy that is. So my guess is that's probably a fairly expensive prop right there. You wouldn't go fast, but you could push a lot. Okay, I put me a little petroleonis jelly right there to put my keep my little pin. Went and got a nice new impeller. Because that other one was just, and I'm using this stainless plate out of the, this lower unit. Now sometimes, it helps to have a little screwdriver to put right there. So that thing, that pin, I done messed it all up now. So the pin, uh, most of my petroleum jelly ain't on the flat spot. Come here, you. Big old fat feeners don't help. Stay there. There. And let's see if I can. Oh, look at there. Just like that. You gotta take time. 
and then I'll always check it and make sure it's goody, goody, goody. Now, uh, see all that white powdery stuff on them bolts? Look at that. We got to get that off. So I'm going to go over to my bench wire wheel, get that off. I'll be right back. And if you're wondering how I get that old white powdery yuck, you see that? I clamp it in a set of these needle nose vice grips and just get it off there. Just like that. Ain't that much better? I guess I'm out. I, I, I normally have some of this spray on anti-seize lubricant that I can just spray on there. Spray all over everything, but I'm out. So I got it. Got to use the old manual stuff. But that's okay as long as I get some uh, some Kodiak Loctite on there, otherwise known as anti-seize. We don't have problems with things coming loose here. And I'm gonna spray some soap all over that and in the cup. And then we'll twist it on there. Okay. There we go. There we go. There she blows. Don't you know? There she blows. There she blows. Okay. Okay. We got the anesthes all over that. Washer, spacer, whatever it's called, thingy, and a crown nut. Gotta have that. Well, then, then we need to tighten it up. Now, comes the gazillion dollar question, which is, is the little car key pin thing lined up, or is it not? You know, this thing, it's the hardest thing to get. For one, I've been known to drop things. So you want to get that, you know, that tip back together, because that's hard. That's pretty good. Oh, I can see the hole. And I'm not lined up. So, let's see what we can do about that. If I can, I only got a little bit. I can tighten it or back off. Either way is fine. So I'm going to go past it and then back off some. Because I think that's what Manuel says to do. I think. Now it is.
AC, about a half a cup of water come out of that hole. If you don't, take a piece of wire and unstick it. Okay, so I'd say I made out pretty good on this little motor in the end. Now, had I not had a lower unit, if I didn't have all these parts that I hoard, um, you know, say that you came across this at a yard sale or a flea market or whatnot and you know and it was bound like it was when we we started out here and you bought it on the chance that you know uh maybe it was weather seized or something like that and then you could get home and find out it's nothing but a bad shift link or maybe it is weather seized and you can just squirt a little tri or something in the cylinders and rock it and get it unstuck. Um, but you do got to be careful because in this case, let's say you pick this motor up for a couple hundred bucks and then found out that the lower unit was toast like this one was. So I guess what I'm saying is use all the caution you can. Definitely if you come across one of these it seems like it's bound up like that. Um, you should be able to turn over that lower unit, the, the propeller. And if you can't, mm, I, I, unless I was buying it as a parts motor and knew that up front, I'd walk away. In this case, I have lots of 15 lower units. The good news and the good thing about um, these lower units is without any real modification at all, you just, you know, you, you don't have to go inside the lower unit to unbolt the drive shaft, you know, um, or anything like that. It just slides right out with the water pump. Same with the shift rod, it just screws right out. Um, and that I know of from 1974 to 2006, both models, the lower units will interchange. Um, this one, I'm going to pull this lower unit apart just because I want to I wanna see what actually went on in here other than just dry yuck. But if you look at this lower unit, it has, it has the, uh, I got a customer pulling up, it has the zinc right here and different things. Um, and it has the plastic deal here. I waved that he could come on in but he turned around. Um, it has the plastic kind of intake there, has the zinc right there, and this is I'm sure original to this motor and, and this one's I'll have to look at the numbers on it to see what year but you can see the zinc you can see the plastic now let's look at this one you see where the zinc is you got little holes and where the plastic one is on this it's it's actually cast into this so where the here's the zinc on this one so you got little holes where that zinc would be and then here you've got metal casting where the intake is let's see if I can see what the year model is on this thing okay it is this is a 95 
So this is a 1995. This lower on here, because of the differences in the two, I can almost guarantee it's off the earlier model. Get you back around. So, um, like I said, that I know of from 1974, which would have been the end of the nine and one half turtle pumpkin head um, motor and the introduction of the low profile 9, 9, and 15 all the way up until 2006. Those lower units and Cramden, you can set me straight if I'm wrong, but I'm going by memory here. But I believe that's that that's you know that's a large span. Um, and the other good news about this little motor, when you come across them, is just like I showed you, the the prop selection for this little outboard is is quite large. You can get all kind of propellers for it, and uh, so. But beware if they're all bound up. Unless you're getting it at the price of parts, you're rolling them dice. So, um, I think I'm going to start, uh, I got to, get this 55 commercial Johnson in here and get a starter on it. But I think I've went long enough and rambled enough on this video. So, um, that's going to be a wrap on this one. I got my mercury tank all jujued up and soaking and and uh, again I appreciate those that kind of steered me in the right direction on that. Thank you. So that's going to be a wrap. I want to thank you for watching and as always that is one more hack from Kodiak. Thanks for watching. More vids are coming on Inside Outboards with your host, Cody Bass.